Well, good evening. Welcome to Life Church. We are so glad that you would come out to church on a Friday night. Who would have thunk it? Praise the Lord. All right, if you'll make your way back to your seats. Thank you all so much again for being here tonight. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, will you join me? Let me get everybody's attention. I know you love fellowshipping, visiting with one another. <laughs> All the time. God is good. Hey, some of you, uh, some of you regular folks here, you probably don't remember Miss Joyce there in the aisle with the, with the uh, burgundy scarf on. She joined us for tent revival, and uh, came up from Big Spring Care Center. And uh, you'll remember we baptized her on that Wednesday night. When she came up out of the water, the steam was just blowing because it was cold <laughs> that night. But that didn't stop her. She was going to follow the Lord. That blessed me, and it's good to see you again. Hey, uh, will you help me in welcoming those that are joining us on uh, live stream on Facebook? Uh, just uh, we want to welcome them. So give them a big round of applause. Now, now listen. Now listen, those of you watching online tonight, you, you know, this is not uh, this. This was not designed uh, to be your regular church live stream. We want you to be with us in the house, and if you're not around here, you get into a house of the Lord that's around you, and you get connected, and you uh, begin to develop develop relationships and be a part of that body. But uh, if you're unable to get to church for physical reason or what have you, you're out of town for this, uh, we're glad you're watching, and we welcome you. Uh, we're going to, normally when we had a guest, we would take an offering at the end of the service, but... We're going to do that right now because I'm anticipating God moving and our altar time being a powerful time, and I don't want to interrupt that. And so uh, our ushers are going to get ready to wait on you uh, to give to Barry's ministry unto the Lord, but through Barry's ministry. And uh, so you do your very best. Uh, we'll give opportunity every service for you to do that. So uh, those watching online, there's a link there where you can click. And uh, there's a new tab in the giving area that says Winter Revival. If you'll use that tab, then we'll know that's for this event and for this ministry. Appreciate it very much. Let's pray. Father, thank you, uh, Lord, for your provision. Lord, thank you for your servant who comes with no expectations other than just trusting the Lord to meet the need. And so, Lord, we thank you for his faith. And, uh, Lord, we thank you for the faith that we have to give uh, exceedingly and abundantly above and beyond what we might normally do. And so, Lord, I pray you'll uh, speak to the hearts of your people to give. And, uh, Lord, let it be more than enough to meet the need. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. While they're doing that, uh, just a couple of quick housekeeping things. If you didn't find it, restrooms are just right out that door over there. And uh, so if you need those, those are there. Again, the schedule tomorrow night will gather at 6 o'clock instead of 7. So 6 o'clock Saturday night, Sunday morning, 1030. And uh, excuse me, again on Sunday night at 6 o'clock. And appreciate you being here and being a part of what God is about to do. Uh, let me back up. Being a, being a part of what God is already doing. He's just going to take us to the next level. Amen. All right, they're about to wrap that up, and I'm ready to just turn this thing over to Barry. I know he's been uh, preparing. I know he's heard from God. I know he's ready to deliver a word and a challenge and to, uh, to just help us, help us to grow. Are you ready? All right, welcome Barry Young as he comes. Come on, brother.
Well, good evening. Man, oh man, what a blessing to be here tonight. Now, now, Pastor Carl didn't mention a very important thing. My name is Barry Young, and I'm from the home of the Super Bowl champion, Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> hey, y'all, how many know there was 50 years that we could not say that? Can I get a yes? And so I got to milk it for all I can get out of it. And so I'm glad that you're here tonight. I'm glad you're here tonight. Can, can, can I tell you something? The world's full of bad news, but we're full of good news. And, and, and I feel like the Holy Spirit told me to tell you this tonight. If God didn't have a plan for your life, why is the devil attacking you so hard? I said, if God didn't have a plan for your life, why is the devil attacking you so hard? Now, now tonight, we're here to encounter God. And so, just from the bottom of my heart, I want to say thank you all for being here. Could you guys help me thank a few important people? Um, can you thank our worship leader, Sharik Cooley, from driving down from Kansas City uh, to be here with us? And I also want to thank, how many of you are thankful for young people that love the Lord Jesus Christ? And so, we have a, a young lady that's on our worship team. She's 19. And she is a student at Evangel University. Can we thank Jaden for being on our worship team here tonight? How do you know we need more young people like Jaden? And so, Mark and Jody, I love you all. Thank you all for being here. And, and, and that, now, now listen, I would never tell Pastor Carl what to do. Never. I, I don't have the authority to do this, but how many of you are grateful for your piano player? Can I get a yes? Now, now, Pastor Carl, I would never do this, but how many of you would like to take a vote tonight to make Jamie a member of this church? If that's you, would you raise your hand? Okay, so Jamie, you just joined this church, and they want the offering check tomorrow morning if you could do that. And so how many are thankful for anointed piano players? And so, guys, I'm glad y'all are here tonight. Let me tell you a little bit about my ministry, and, and then I'm going to preach. Uh, let me tell you, I, I've known Jesus Christ. I got saved January 1st, 1990, and I came in as a young person just like this. My dad was an alcoholic for decades. And in a service just like this, bound up to alcohol, he has been in many marriages, and all of them got divorced. My dad said, God, if you're out there, would you heal me? And the power of God came down and healed my dad. And can I tell you what my dad said? My dad said, Lord, if you're big enough to heal me, you're powerful enough to be my Savior. I want you to be the Savior in my life. And, 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 and that's why we go all over the nation. Can I tell you what I am? I'm a dealer in hope. How many know, how many know if you want to get depressed, turn the TV on? And so we go all over America preaching the gospel. Next weekend, I'm preaching the gospel in another country. We're going to be in Arkansas. I can't wait to get down there. They're even going to let me wear my shoes. It's going to be an amazing. They even let me keep my teeth. I can't wait to get down there. And, and so, but we go all over the world. And, and on your way out the door, my wife is going to be at our ministry table. Let me tell you three ways we can bless you. First of all, how many know the hope for the nation is not the Democrat Party or the Republican Party or anything built by man? The hope of the nation, the hope of the world is only Jesus Christ and his church. And, and, and so we have our weekly 30-second devotional, and Miss Joyce, it's free. Now, can I tell you what my motto is? If it's free, it's for me. Can I get a yes? And, and so it doesn't cost you anything. We just want to give people the Word of God. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people have signed up for our 30-second devotional. If you'd like that, you can just sign up. We just want to give you the Word of God. Number two, uh, we have some books that we sell. Now, let me tell you why I like the written Word. Because when the written Word is the Word of God and honors Jesus Christ, it can be easily given away. And so we have a couple things. First of all, we have our devotionals. And so uh, with our devotionals, the first one we have is our 30-second devotional. How many know 30 seconds with the Holy Ghost can turn everything around? And, and so, young lady, thank you for being here tonight. That's for you. We sell those for $15. And then we wrote a book for the Forgotten Mission Field. Can I tell you who the Forgotten Mission Field is? Do I believe in helping the poor? Yes. 
Do I believe in helping the drug addicts? Yes. But can I tell you who's often forgotten? Every day, 22 military veterans take their own life. The leading killer of firefighters and police officers is death by suicide. We wrote a book called 30-Second Devotional for the First Responder. And so if you're, if you're current or former law enforcement, military, fire, or EMS, could you just stand up real quickly? Current or former law enforcement, military, fire, or EMS. Can we thank these heroes for being here in the house? Young man, that's for you right there. Thank you for being here. And so, um, also, we caught a couple how-to books. Now, now, can I tell you about these how-to books? These will put juice in your caboose. The devotionals are $15. This first one's called How to Have Victory in Life. How many know you can be a victor or you can be a victim, but you can't be both? Oh, I'm preaching good. And so, Brother Dwayne, Miss Tammy, I love y'all. This is for you right here. Thank you. And then, and then I wrote a book, How to Live a Life of Blessing. Um, pa Pastor Margo, can I speak some Christian ease? How many of you know somebody that's anointing, not anointed? Anybody know somebody like that? And so uh, we sell this for $10. God has created us to be a blessing. Can I get an amen? When you go to, the, when you go to work, you're supposed to be a blessing. When you go to school, when you go out to eat, is it Jeffrey? Jevin, forgive me. That's for you right there, brother. And, and, and so, and then the last way, um, last way if you, we want to bless you is we want to give you an opportunity to expand God's kingdom. Um, we never, ever talk money. We, 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 we go any place. We never talk money. How many know where God guides, God provides? We have people all over America that partner with us. And if you'd like to become a serving pastor's partner, we ask people to pray about giving $10 a month. Every single dime you have uh, goes to our ministry, goes to our ministry expenses. Uh, we don't take a salary from that. And so if you say, Barry, um, I can't travel the nation bringing people to Jesus, but I want to support you in doing that, my wife would be back there. If you become a partner, we want to give you all four of our books. And so how many are you ready for the Word of God tonight? I, 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 I'm ready for the Word of God. If you have your Bibles, if you have your Bibles, turn me to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. And while you're turning there, can I introduce one more person that I'm going to preach? Do you know how I'm called to preach? Do you know how I know I'm called to preach? Because I'm filled with the Holy Ghost and I love fried chicken. Can I get an amen? And so, um, can you guys, would you guys like proof that God's still doing miracles today? Would you help me welcome my beautiful wife, Kelly Young, to the house? How many of y'all know you look at her and you look at me and the first thing you think is, that boy must know how to pray. Can I get an amen? And so, um, friends, tonight, let me tell you why we're here. Because politics doesn't bring the dead back to life. Do, do you know why we're here? The, the experts, the scientists, the doctors. Do you know the scientists and the doctors can't answer the three biggest questions we have in life? What are those questions? Where did I come from? Why am I here? And what's going to happen when I die? You know, the experts can't answer those three questions, but God and his word does. And, and, and tonight, what I want to do is I just want to lift up the name of Jesus. So if you have your Bibles, would you turn me to, to 2 Chronicles chapter 20? And, and, and I want to read this short text. And what I want you to hear is the nation, God's people, were in big trouble. How many know that sounds like today? <laughs> and, and, and friends, today, the title of this message is, if you'll give me a few moments, is it's time for a breakthrough. How many know we need a breakthrough? When the leading killer of our teenagers is suicide, we need a breakthrough. When the leading killer of our babies is abortion, we need a breakthrough. Friends, I want you to know the only hope for this world is Jesus. And so I want you to look at me, 2 Chronicles chapter 20. And I want you to look, we're going to read seven verses, beginning in verse number 2. Say amen when you get there. Now, y'all, here's how I preach. The more amens I get, the quicker I preach. Touch her, Lord, touch her. Look at verse number 2. Everybody say two. Here's what it says. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you. Have you all ever been there before? I have. 
where you feel like all hell is breaking loose. You get that bill. You get that doctor's report. Your son or daughter goes sideways. It says a great multitude is coming against you. Verse 3, and Jehoshaphat feared. I love how God's word is real. Can I get an amen? King Jehoshaphat's a hero in the faith, but God's word is, is being real. He was scared. It says in verse 3, he feared, and he set himself to seek the Lord. And he proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. So Judah gathered together to ask help from the government. So Judah asked for help from the politicians. No, it says, so Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord. And from all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Look at verse 12. Here's what happens. Oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this multitude that's coming against us. Friend, can I tell you something? By ourselves, we have no power against the enemies we faced. In our own strength, we have no power to overcome debt, death, hell, and the grave. Look at verse 12. Oh, God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that's coming against us, nor do we know what to do. But the end of verse 12 says, but our eyes are on you. But our eyes are on you. Look at verse 15. Got three more verses left. And he said, listen, all of you, Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and King Jehoshaphat. Thus says the Lord, do not be afraid. Life Church, do not be afraid. Online, do not be afraid, nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but it's God's. For the battle is not yours, but it's God's. In verse 17, you will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. And let me give you the last verse, verse 20. Now when they began to complain, no, when they began to sing and praise the Lord, the Lord set ambushes against them and their enemies were defeated. I have a word from God for you to hear tonight and the very brief message, but it's like fire shut up on my bones. The title of this message is, it's time for a breakthrough in Jesus' name. Ma'am or sir, in your body, it's time for a breakthrough. Ma'am or sir, in your finances, in your relationships, it is time for a breakthrough. Would you just raise a hand with me? Could we go to the Lord Father in the name of Jesus? Lord, we don't know what to do. Everything's going sideways in this world. Lord, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. And so, Lord, right now, in these few brief moments, I pray over every person's sound of my voice. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus for an overflow of your power, for an overflow of your healing, for an overflow of your victory in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask you to do what the devil has told my brothers and sisters you cannot do. Lord, we receive your grace and your power. In the name of Jesus, we pray, and all God's people said, amen, amen. Can we thank Brother Jamie one more time and this worship team for being here with us? Amen. So tonight what I want to do is I want to give you four bullets for the devil. Can I get a yes? Now, now, can I encourage you? Can I tell you, how many of y'all have ever gone to church sometime and somebody gives you a prayer request about another believer, but it's really gossip? How many of you have ever gone to church and all of a sudden you hear Christian folks talking bad about other folks? You know what I tell people? Save your bullets for the devil. Can I get a yes? And I, Oh, I'm preaching good. And here's what I want to do tonight. I want to give you four bullets for the devil because it's time for a breakthrough. Let me give you the first one. Everybody say one. Okay, look what the Bible says in verse 12. It says, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. The next time the devil attacks you, can I give you the first bullet? 
remember to look to the Lord. Look at verse 12. It says, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Friend, your hope is not found in Barry Young. As much as I love your pastor, can we just say thank God for Pastor Carl and Margot Long? Can we thank God for the Longs tonight? I said, can we thank God? Can I tell you something? You guys don't have hirelings. You have a pastor that wants a move of God at this church. Guys, you need to know how blessed you are. We have many churches that, that don't have pastors, and the pastors they have, they want to play church. You have a pastor that wants you and your family to encounter the miracles and the love of God. You need to know how blessed you are. And so here's what I want you to see in verse number 12. It says, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Could I tell you today, if the devil's attacking you, could I drop this on you? Opposition is confirmation. You're doing the right thing. Opposition is confirmation. You're doing the right thing. Could I say it another way? If the devil's not attacking you, you may be out of God's will. Amen by myself. Let me say that one more time. If the devil's not attacking you, you're probably doing something wrong. I am an 80s hairband child. Can I get a yes? Can I tell you, I'm such an 80s hairband kid, I used to have a mullet in Jesus' name. <laughs> Let, let's just take a quick poll. How many of you know what 80s hairband had a one-arm drummer? Def Leppard. Can, can I tell you something? When I was in the 80s, I was lost and undoing. I was doing all types of crazy stuff. And when I got saved, it's like the devil threw everything at me but the kitchen sink. And can I tell you what the Lord whispered in my heart? Because I asked, Lord, Lord, why didn't the devil attack me when I was lost? Here's what the Lord told me. The devil does not attack what he already possesses. The devil only attacks what God possesses. And what I want you to see, look at verse 12. It says, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Opposition's confirmation. You're doing the right thing. Friends, when the devil attacks you, one of two things is going to happen. You can become pitiful or you can become powerful, but you can't be both. You can become pitiful or you can become powerful, but you can't be both. What's it say in verse 12? They didn't become pitiful. They became powerful. Lord, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Our eyes are on you. Friend, could I encourage you, remember to look to the Lord. Could I tell you right now, what you believe is what you become. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. Good preaching, Pastor Bay. I know it is. What you believe is what you become. If you believe fear, you become fear. If you believe anger, you become anger. But you know the opposite is true? If you believe joy, you become joy. If you believe faith, you become faith. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. What you believe is what you become. How many of y'all have ever seen somebody, they believe they're going to fail, and then what happens? Hello, clue dog. They fail. They believe they're going to lose, and they lose. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says as a man thinks in his heart. Ooh, there's an anointing to preach. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Friends, today we got to remember to look to the Lord. And, and can I tell you something? Sometimes well-intentioned Christians can fall in love with the president, or they can fall in love with a political party, or they can fall in love with a doctor. Friends, I want you to hear me closely. we got to look to the Lord. we got to look to the Lord. The Lord wants us focused on him. The Lord wants us focused on him. Please hear me. Don't focus on what you can't do. Focus on what God can do. What's the saying in verse 12? We don't know what to do, but our eyes, they're on you. You know what God has talked to me about? It's not what's around you that's important. It's what's in you that's important. Well, we've got some Navy veterans in the house. For those of you that have been on a ship before, you know what I'm talking about. The water on the outside of the boat never causes it to sink. It's the water that gets on the inside of the boat. That's what causes it to sink. How many know as believers we're going to be around some crazy stuff in this world? How many of you have seen every year it just seems like this world gets further away from the Lord? But it's not what's around you that's important. It's what's in you that's important. 
Could I beg you to do this? The Bible says in Psalm 118, verse 24, this is the day the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. The next time you get bad news about a, a finance or a bill, would you just say it out loud? This is the day the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. The next time your son or daughter goes sideways, can I get a yes? The next time your teenager goes sideways, would you just say it out loud? This is the day the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. The next time you get a little backache, would you just begin to say it out loud? This is the day the Lord has made, and I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Friends, please hear me today. Out of the abundance of the mouth, heart, the mouth's going to overflow. C can I tell you, I love my wife. I am so grateful that 21 years ago, God brought Kelly Young into my life. Now, you guys thought you were just going to hear preaching on this night of revival. Can I give you the number one piece of marriage advice? This, Charles, this is the number one piece of marriage advice. Here it is. In a marriage, the man always has to have the last word. It don't matter who's right. It don't matter who's wrong. In a marriage, the man always has to have the last word, and the last word is yes, ma'am. Can I get an amen, ladies? Now, ladies, that's the most amens you've given me all night long. Okay, can I tell you something? Isn't that how we're supposed to be with God? This is what I want you to do, son. Yes, sir. Daughter, this is what I want you to do. Friends, you don't get more of God's supernatural power by trying. You get more of God's supernatural power by trusting. Let me say that one more time. You don't get more of God's supernatural power by trying. You get more of his power by trusting. What's the Bible say in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. Look at verse 12. They're trusting the Lord. Lord, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Life Church, can I give you some good news? It's time for a breakthrough in Jesus' name. But could I say this to you because I love you? If your eyes are on Pastor Carl, you ain't going to get a breakthrough. If your eyes are on Barry or Kelly Young, you ain't going to get a breakthrough. If your eyes are on a politician or even a church or a denomination, friends, the first bullet to get a breakthrough, your eyes got to be on the Lord. Let me give you number two. Everybody say two. Okay, look at what the Bible says in verse 15. I want you to hear God's word. Oh, I love this part. Look what it says in verse 15. For the battle is not yours, but it's God's. Life Church, for those of you here, for those of you online, can I just speak this over you? Stop trying to fight a battle that's not yours. The battle is not yours, but it's God. So number one, I want you to remember to look to the Lord. Could I give you number two? Here's your second bullet. Remember whose battle it is. Remember whose battle it is. Verse 15, for the battle is not yours, but it's God's. Can I tell you Jesus gave us the key to defeating the devil every time in Matthew 4? You know what I do? All I do is preach the word of God. You're going to hear me quote so many verses. You know why I preach the word of God? Because this was true yesterday. It's true today, and it's going to be true tomorrow. Jesus gave you and me the key to defeating the devil every time. Let me tell you where that's found, Matthew 4.4. 4. Here's what happens. The Bible says in Matthew 4.4 4, that Jesus tempted, or de the devil tempted Jesus. And can I tell you what Matthew 4.4 4 says? Here's the key. Jesus said, it is written. And then Jesus got tempted again in verse number 8. He says, it is written. And then the devil tried to tempt him again, and Jesus said in verse 11, it is written. You get more of God's power when you agree with what he says about you. And you get less of God's power when you agree with what the devil says about you. You see, friends, I want you to hear me today. you got to remember to look to the Lord, and you got to remember whose battle it is. If you want the power of Jesus, you've got to have the attitude of Jesus. I guess the microphone's not working over here. Let me try over here. I said if you want the power of Jesus, you've got to have the attitude of Jesus. I'll give the altar call over here. So here's what I want you all to get. If you want the power of Jesus... You've got to have the attitude of Jesus. You've you got to have the attitude of Jesus. Uh, uh, where do we see in the Word of God where Jesus is moaning or complaining? 
Where do we see that Jesus is blaming somebody else? Uh-oh. I went from preaching and meddling. Can I get a yes? Could I, could, while I'm on that rabbit, could I say this right now? As long as you blame people for your problems, you will never get blessed. As long as it's always somebody else's fault. Friends, can I tell you, God doesn't bless blaming. I don't care what you've done in your life. If you'll turn to God with a repentant heart, he will forgive you. He will heal you. He will cleanse you. Genesis 50, 20 says that what the devil intends for harm, God turns around and uses for good. But you got to remember whose battle it is. Now, can I confess a struggle I have? Can, can I keep it real, Ronnie? Ronnie, can I keep it real? Can I tell you what I struggle with? Can I tell you what I, is it Sherelle? Can I tell you what I struggle with? Can I keep it real? I struggle with skinny people. Can I tell you who I really, <laughs> can I tell you who I really struggle with? I struggle with skinny people that eat whatever they want and stay skinny. Those people need to get saved in Jesus' name. How many of y'all know if you're breathing, you're going to have a struggle? Opposition is confirmation. You're doing the right thing. Look at verse 15. For the battle is not yours, but it's God's. Friends, you will get worn out when you're trying to fight a battle that only God can fight. You will get discouraged when you fight a battle. What I want you to do is follow the words of Jesus. Just say it is written and hit the devil with the word of God. Just say it is written and hit the devil with the word of God. And if you don't have a Bible verse, you just look at the devil and say, keep a knocking, but you can't come in. But just say it is written in Jesus' name. It's time for a breakthrough. Number one, you got to remember to look to the Lord. I love you. Number two, you got to remember whose battle it is. Let me give you number three. I want you, I want you to get this third one here. I want you to see what the Bible says. Look at what the Bible says here. It says this here in verse 17. Stand firm. Oh, you know what I wish I could say to pastors all over America? Stand firm and stop watering the gospel down. Amen. Look at verse 17. It says, stand firm. Ephesians 6.10 says, finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Verse 17. Stand firm and see the deliverance the Lord will give you. Can I tell you what Exodus 14.14 14 says? The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. The Lord will fight for you, life church. You need only to be still. Can I tell you what faith does? Faith sees past the problem to the promise. Woo. Faith sees past the problem to the promise. In verse 17, I love what verse 17 says, stand firm. Friends, God never planned for his people to quit. But we got a whole lot of quitters in the church. Can I tell you something? God's not called us to start. He's called us to finish. Oh, where, where, where do you find that in the word of God, Brother Barry? Philippians 1, 6, he who began a good work and you will be faithful to complete it. Friends, God has not called us to start a great thing. He's called us to finish a great thing. Don't you give up on that dream. Don't you give up on that ministry. Don't you give up on your son or daughter. Don't you give up on that vision God gave you. we got to stand. Number three, remember to stand boldly. I firmly believe that our country is in the way it is, not because of the politicians. I firmly believe our country is the way it's in, not because of the votes of the people. Can I tell you right now, you can't vote the devil out. The only thing you can do is cast the devil out. I believe the country is where it is in because many of our churches are powerless. Many of our churches aren't having Friday night meetings. They're not having revivals. They're not having prayer for God to supernaturally step into the lives of young people. Friends, we got to remember to be bold. Could I, could I drop this on you? The obstacle in front of you is not as big as the God inside of you. The obstacle in front of you is not as big as the God on the inside of you. Look at what God's word says. Stand firm. F friends, today, if you know Jesus, well, well Barry, hold on, Barry. What if it becomes against the law to serve Jesus? Well, let's go to jail. Well, what, what if it becomes against the law and we go to the firing squad? Can I tell you something right now? If you know Jesus, death is not the end. Death is the beginning. 
If you know Jesus Christ, death is not the end. Death is the beginning. Look at verse 17. Stand firm and see the deliverance the Lord will give you. Could I just say this to you? A private faith is a powerless faith. What did we learn if you grew up in church like I did? How many of y'all know I was a drug baby? Can I be? Can, I was a drug baby. I was drugged to morning service. I was drugged to night service. I was drugged to Wednesday. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Okay, when I was a little kid, you know what I learned when I got drugged to, to Sunday school? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Fr friends, can I tell you something? We're not called to be judges. We're called to be lights. Uh, we're not called to be judges. We're called to be lights. And verse 17 says, it says, stand firm. Friends, could I tell you a private faith is a powerless faith? What's the Bible say? Guys, we're not supposed to hide the light underneath the bushel. What's, what's the Bible say? Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'm going to draw all men unto myself. Friends, remember to look to the Lord. Remember whose battle it is. And remember to stand firm. Can I quote Romans 1.16? I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of God unto salvation. I said it's the power of God unto salvation. you got to remember to be bold. Can I show this first picture? Is, is it Eli? Brother Eli, can I show you this first picture? This man pastored the largest church in the world 110 years ago. His name was John Harper. Pastored the largest church in the world. Pastor Carl, can I tell you about Pastor John? He was a pastor in Scotland, and every week people were getting saved. Alcoholics would show up to the service, and then the power of God would hit them, and they'd get sober. God was moving and it was the largest church in the world. If I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto myself. He was bold. And let me tell you what happened. The largest church in America was, was not as big as his church. It was called Moody Bible Church in Chicago, Illinois. And in, in the early 1900s, they contacted Pastor John in Scotland, and they said, would you come preach in America? And Pastor John, he said, sure. Before he could leave, his wife tragically died. And he became a single parent. And can you imagine, you're pastoring the largest church in the world. Your wife dies and you're a parent. His church board went to him and said, Pastor, we totally understand if you want to quit the ministry. We totally understand if you want to step down from the church. And can I tell you what he said? He goes, Jesus didn't step down on me and I'm not stepping down on Jesus. Can I tell you what he did? When life goes sideways, can I tell you, you can give in to pain or you can give in to praise. How many know it rains on the just and the unjust? Life is going to go sideways. I'm not going to preach a fake gospel to you. If you serve Jesus, I promise life will get sideways at times. But when life does get sideways, you can give in to pain or you can give in to praise. And Pastor John gave in to praise. And so the church kept going, and so he was a single father. You need to remember that. So this was night in the early 1900s. He wasn't going to fly to America. How was he going to get to America? Boat. And so he's coming from Scotland to America with his little girl. And in the middle of the night, his ship hits an iceberg. He was on the Titanic. And so what happened is, if you'll remember about the Titanic, it's not just that it hit an iceberg. The Titanic was called the unsinkable ship. They did not have enough what? You guys said it. Many of you knew it. They didn't have enough lifeboats. And they only allowed on the lifeboats women and women and. And so what happened is he was the only man allowed on a lifeboat because he was a single what? He was a single dad. And so what happens is, can you imagine, there's thousands of people on this ship. There's only enough lifeboats for a very small percentage. And as he gets on the lifeboat with his daughter, he looks back. And there's thousands of people screeching out in fear and terror. And he looks at his daughter. Have you ever had a check in your spirit? True story. You can fact check this story. He looks back at his daughter and he said, sweetheart, serve Jesus all the days of your life and I will see you again. He wraps his arm around. He kisses her on the forehead and he steps back onto the Titanic. He's the only per man we have recorded that was on a lifeboat safely and got back onto the Titanic. And can I show you what he did? 
on the top deck of the Titanic. He started running to people, turn to Jesus, and he can save you today. And he's leading people to the Lord on the top of the Titanic minutes before they die. And he starts running to other people, turn to Jesus, and he can save you today. He's leading them to the Lord right as they're, minutes before they're going to go into this icy sea and die. Finally, the Titanic fully goes underwater. He has a life preserver on, and he starts swimming to people. Is it Brian? Brian, he starts swimming to people. Turn to Jesus, and he can save you today. Turn to Jesus, and he can save you today. And what's happening, Tom, is he's praying with people seconds before they step into eternity. He swims to one man, and he says, Ronnie, he says, turn to Jesus, and he can save you today. And this man looks at him and says, I don't need your Jesus. I need your life preserver. And can I show you what John Harper did? He took off his life preserver, and he said, as Jesus freely gave his life for me and you, I freely give you my life preserver. And a few moments later, he died. Now you might say, well, Pastor Bay, how do we have this story? Here's why. The man he gave the life preserver to was picked up by a rescue boat. And every year in Chicago, they had a reunion of the survivors and the man he gave his life preserver to preached the gospel to all of the survivors and shared how his life was saved physically and spiritually by John Harper. Now, now you might be saying, you might be saying, Barry, why are you telling me that story? Because we've got to have that same boldness. We've got to have that same boldness. Now, some of you are saying, well, Barry, it's different. His ship was sinking. Oh, really? I think our ship is sinking. And many parts of the American church are running away from the gospel. We need to run to people. Can I tell you, we have the good news. We have the good news. Can I give you, what's the most quoted verse in the Bible? John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. But could I quote you the one behind it? Many people can quote 16. Most can't quote 17. Let me quote verse 17. For God did not send his son to condemn the world but to save the world. Guys, what is our message? Our message is to this broken world, Jesus didn't come to condemn you, Jesus came to save you. Well, what do we say to the homosexuals? Jesus didn't come to condemn you, he came to save you. What do we say to the, the people that are committing heterosexual sin? Jesus didn't come to condemn you, he came to save you. What do we say to the alcoholics like my dad? What do we say to the drug addicts? Jesus did not condemn you, he came to save you. He came to save you. Friends, we got to be remembered. We got to remember to be bold. Let me give you the last one. I want you to see this last one. So, first of all, we got to remember to look to the Lord. Can I get an amen? Number two, we got to remember whose battle it is. Can I get a yes? You guys said amen. I want a yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Here's the third one we got to remember to be bold. And let me give you the last one. Look at what the Bible says. Look what it says in verse 22. As Pastor Jamie comes to play real softly. Look at verse 22. As they began to sing and praise the Lord, the Lord set ambushes. Look at verse 22. As they began to sing and praise the Lord, the Lord set ambushes. Friends, can I tell you, you can't complain your way to a break, you breakthrough, but you can praise your way to a breakthrough. You can't complain your way to a breakthrough, but you can praise your way to a breakthrough. Look at verse 22. This is what God's holy word says. Verse 22, as they began to sing and praise the Lord, the Lord set ambushes. Can I tell you what I've learned? When we praise God, we release faith. When we don't have enough money to pay a bill and we praise God, we're releasing faith. When we get a medical report, when we've got a, a hurt in our back or our legs or our arms, and we begin to just praise God, we're releasing faith. But can I tell you the opposite? When we complain, we restrict faith. Let me say that one more time. When we praise God, we release faith, and when we complain, we restrict it. And look what it says in verse 22. Look at verse 22. It says, they began to sing and praise the Lord. The enemy wants you discouraged. 
Can I tell you how you know the difference between God's voice and the devil's voice? If you're taking notes, you want to write these three things down. Here's how you know the difference between God's voice and the devil's voice. The devil brings confusion, and God brings clarity. Let me say it one more time. How do you know the difference? The devil brings confusion, God brings clarity. Can I give you a second way you know the difference? The devil's voice brings harm, and God's voice brings healing. The devil's voice, voice brings harm, God's voice brings healing. Can I give you the third way you know it's the devil? The devil's trying to pull you down, and God's trying to lift you up. And, and, and see what it says in verse 12. Look what it says in verse 12. It says, as they began to sing and praise the Lord, the Lord set ambushes. I'm almost done preaching. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Pastor Bear, you're almost done. Can I tell you the number one thing I learned about preaching? The mind can receive only what the seat can endure. Can I get an amen? Okay, here's what I want you all to get. we got to remember to look to the Lord. we got to remember whose battle it is. We've got to remember to stand firm. And here's the last thing. We've got to remember to praise. When you praise God, you're releasing faith. Can I tell you, I preach every place. I preach revivals. I preach at Assembly of God churches. I preach at Baptist churches. I preach at Methodist churches. I preach to young people. I, uh, hold on, Barry. You preach in all these other denominations. Can I tell you something? It's not about a church. It's about a choice. Woo, I'm preaching good. Let me say that one more time. It's not about a church. It's about a choice. I, I, I'm going to tell you right now, there's a lot I don't know about heaven, but I know one thing. There's a lot I know about heaven, but there's one thing I know. When you and me stand before God, he's not going to say, what church did you belong to? He's not going to say, show me a church membership guard. He's going to say, what would you do with Jesus? Listen to me, friends. It's not about a church. It's about a choice. Why do, why do I exist? Why does Pastor Carl and Pastor Margo exist? To point people to Jesus. It's not about a church, it's about a choice. And I want you to see verse 22. Verse 22 says, as they began to sing and praise the Lord, the Lord gave them victory. we got to remember to worship the Lord. Can I tell you, I preach every place. And whether you know this or not, parents, the summer, the two summers of COVID were miserable for our young people. I used to be a youth pastor. And, and can I tell you something? During COVID, the youth camps were canceled. If you were in the big city like Kansas City, the youth groups were canceled. And, and, and so what happened is I, I preached at an Assembly of God youth camp. I preached to three or 400 teenagers, and God touched two teenage girls. They went from a private faith to a public faith. Can we show that next picture, Eli? I met these two girls through a youth camp, and that's Sophia Bowen on the right, and that's Chase Snicker on the left. And can I tell you something? They got fired up by the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you right now, and, and, and can I tell you, they got bold. And in the summer of COVID in Kansas City, our mayor, I'm not speaking evil of our mayor, I'm just telling the truth. If, if, if it had more than 10 people, it was closed. And they said, Barry, we need corporate worship. And they said, Barry, we have a way we can meet. How many of you know if you give a teenager an inch, they will take a mile? Can I get a yes, parents? So the mayor of Kansas City made one big mistake. Here's what he said. Any type of group of 10 or over can't meet if it's inside. You know what these two girls did? They said, Barry, we can't meet at our church, but we're going to meet in our backyard on Friday night, and we just want to have a teenager worship service, and we want you to come preach. Now, now, now I, I said, now, hold on. Hold on for a second. I said, Who, are there going to be any adults there? They said, no, just you. I said, are you going to give any free food away or free giveaways or play any games? No, we're just going to worship the Lord. You know what I thought, Pastor Carl, just true as I can be? I thought, mm, there's going to be nobody. We'll have five or ten kids. How many of you know it's worth it to preach to five or ten kids for these little girls? I show up in this backyard, and they probably have ten musical instruments on this porch. And I look out to the right, and there's a hundred teenagers in this backyard. Now, here's, here's what I want you to get. Don't show the picture yet. There's no giveaways. There's no prizes. There's no food. There's no light shows. Two girls got bold for the Lord. 
and they saw their friends drowning in the water, and they said, freely as Jesus gives to me, I'm going to freely give to you. And so what happened is, I, I know we're in Humansville, but in Kansas City, we were having race riots all over the city of Kansas City. There was 100 teenagers, and all of a sudden, the parents, true story, Pastor Carl, they start running to the backyard. They think there's going to be another riot. And when these parents that don't know the Lord, they look in this backyard, there's a hundred teenagers with their hands raised. We got African-American kids, Caucasian kids, Asian kids, Hispanic kids, and they're not saying Trump, and they're not saying Biden. Their hands are raised, Jesus! We love you, Jesus! And they're, they're worshiping God. And these parents, even if you're not saved, when you see something like that, you know it's something different. You don't know what it is if you're not saved. For those that are saved, they knew what it was. It was the power of the Holy Ghost. And what happens is, right in the middle of this worship, that girl on the right, that's Sophia Bowen, she said, right now, we've asked Pastor Barry to come preach. I didn't have a microphone. I didn't have a musical. I didn't have nothing. But I preached as hard as I could preach. And in this backyard, as I finished up, 14 teenagers and parents got born again in Jesus' name. It's time for a breakthrough. It's time for a breakthrough. Would you like to see a picture of when the power of the Holy Ghost hits the backyard with kids? Let's show that last picture. Here we are. And here, here's what I want you to get, friends. They didn't come for very young. They came because two little girls were sold out to the Lord and empowered by the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Friends, listen to me. When the devil attacks you, would you remember to praise? All those girls did is give their friends an opportunity to praise. But we got many people in Humansville that Guys, this is not a Christian country anymore. Our country has moved away from the Lord, and there's not a lot of people that know the true gospel anymore. We, we, got, we got homosexuals getting up and preaching in pulpits every Sunday. We got people standing behind pulpits that are teaching always lead to heaven. We're not here to condemn anybody. Jesus did not come to condemn the world. He came to save the world. That's the power of God. Now, how many know if you want to stay young, run with the young people? How many know if you want to die young, try to keep up with them? Can I get a yes? As we close, it's time for a breakthrough. Adults, can I speak to you? All over America, God's doing stuff just like this. But I'm ready for the adults to get involved. Can I get a yes? Oh, I thank God for the young people. I thank God for the young people. I thank God for the young people. But I don't know about you folks. I want to jump in. Yeah. Do you know what the Bible says about the Holy Ghost touching old people? Isaiah 40, 31. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. How many know when you're that age, you don't need your strength renewed? Guess who needs their strength renewed? How many know I love the young people, and if you're under 30, you have no idea what I'm talking about, but when you get 40 and above, your check engine light starts coming on once in a while. Can I get a yes? What's Isaiah 40, 31? Amen. What's Isaiah 40, 31 say? They that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. It, it, adults, it's time for us to jump into the move of the Holy Ghost. Let me close with this. I've preached as hard as I can preach. And I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to be here tomorrow night because I tell you, God's given me a word from God for tomorrow, for Sunday morning, for Sunday night. But it's time for a breakthrough. If you need a healing, it's time for a breakthrough tonight. The Holy Spirit has spoken this over me. If you need debt cancellation, it's time for the provision of God tonight. If you need a checkup from the neck up, if your mind is filled with anxiety, if you can't sleep at night, it's time for a breakthrough. If something's gone sideways in your life or a relationship, it's time for a breakthrough. But I want you to hear this. If you expect more, you get more. Amen by myself. If you expect more, you get more. 
Where do you find that in the Word of God, Ephesians 3.20? Now to him who's able to do immeasurably more than all that we could ask, dream, or imagine. God wants to do more than you could dream or imagine in Jesus' name. But let me speak this over you. God can never heal what you won't submit to him. Show me one person that got healed in the Bible that didn't want to get healed. Show me one person that got saved in the Bible that didn't want to get saved. The Bible says you have not because you. It's time for a breakthrough. Let me close with this story. So y'all, I'm from Missouri. How many know there's three ways we pronounce our state? If you're from Kansas City and St. Louis, you call it Missouri. If you're from the country, you call it Missouri. And in the winter, we call it misery. Can I get a yes? Okay, so, so what, two, what two rivers come through our state? On the east side is the Mississippi. On the west side is the Missouri. And, and many of those towns got big because of the rivers. And 100 years ago, true story, 100 years ago, many of our towns had drawbridges. And that allowed the horse and buggies, the early cars to go across. But when the showboats would come, what would happen? The steamboats, the cargo, it would go up so they could come through. True story. It was about 100 years ago, and it was on one of our rivers. A bridge operator and his son went to go have a picnic at the bridge. And, and the bridge was up. The next train was still two hours away. And they're enjoying this picnic lunch right on the river. And all of a sudden, the bridge operator hears the train. He hears the train coming. There's a train with 500 people. For some reason, it's two hours early. He's about to pull the lever to bring that bridge down, and he can't find his boy. He looks down at the gears of the bridge by the river, and his boy is playing in the gears. He steps out of the bridge carriage, and he starts yelling, Son, get out of the gears! Get out of the gears! And his boy can't hear him. He's in the gears. The, the, the father starts yelling and jumping, Son, get out of the gears! Get out of the gears! And now the train's getting closer, and his boy can't hear him. He sees a train coming of 500 people, and with tears rolling down his cheeks, true story, the bridge operator pulls a lever, and his son is killed by the gears. 500 lives are saved. And as they're going across the bridge, they're waving and smiling. You might say, well, Barry, why are you telling me that story? That story reminds me of John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave. Do you know Jesus took death so you could take life? Jesus took heaven or hell so you could take heaven. There's only two things you can do with Jesus. There's only two things you can do with a free gift. You can receive it or reject it. I love you. It's time for a breakthrough. Would you bow your heads with me in prayer? With nobody looking around, with every head bowed and every eye closed, let me speak life over you, ma'am and sir. It's time for a breakthrough in your finances. It's time for a breakthrough in your family. It's time for a breakthrough in your body in Jesus' name. But I want to tell you right now, as much as your pastor loves you, he can't give you a breakthrough. I promise if Pastor Carl could give you a breakthrough, he would. I promise if Kirk could give you a breakthrough, he would. If Eli could give you a breakthrough, he would. But I want you to get this. You have to remember to look to the Lord. you got to remember whose battle it is. got to remember to stand firm, and you got to remember to praise. With every head bowed and every eye closed, if you're here today on the sound of my voice, and you say, Barry, would you pray for me? I need healing in my body. Ma'am or sir, it's time for a breakthrough. Well, 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 Brother Barry, we've been prayed over 10 times. It's time to be prayed over the 11th time. Well, well, Barry, I've been praying for months. Okay, but let's go another month. Friends, it's time for a breakthrough. Let me speak this over you. God will never heal what you won't submit to him. If you're hearing the sound of my voice, you say, Barry, would you agree with me in prayer? I need a breakthrough in an area of my body. If that's you right now, would you just raise your hand just all over this church right now? Right now, many, many hands are going up in faith. Every hand that's going up in faith, already, already you're positioning yourself to receive. Number two, you're here today and you're saved. You're here today and you're right with God. This is not in my notes. 
but somebody hurt you. Friends, when somebody hurts you and you don't forgive them, it's been said a thousand times. I'm going to say it a thousand and one times. When somebody hurts you and you don't forgive them, it's like you're drinking poison and you expect it to hurt them and it'll hurt you. If you're here today, you're saved, you're born again, but somebody's hurt you. Ma'am or sir, if you don't forgive them, you'll, you're never going to walk in God's power. Bitterness and unforgiveness will stop the anointing of the Holy Ghost every time. The Bible says, as, as we were freely forgiven, we freely forgive others. Well, Barry, I'm going to forgive them if they ask for my forgiveness. The problem is they probably won't ask. The moment you forgive is the moment you start to heal. If you're here today and somebody's hurt you, maybe inside the church, outside the church, I don't know who, but if you're here today and you need to forgive somebody, ma'am or sir, it's time for a breakthrough. Ma'am or sir, brother or sister, it's time for a breakthrough. If you need to forgive somebody, would you just raise a hand just all over this church right now? Many hands are going up. If you're here today, I want to talk to one more person. And you're born again and you're saved. You're born again and you're saved. And you'd say, Barry, at this winter revival, I want the power of the Holy Ghost just like those teenage girls. I want to see God moving me. I want to see signs and wonders. As bad as your pastor wants that, he can have that for his life, but he can't have it for yours. You say, Barry, you pray with me? I'm ready for the power of the Holy Ghost just to break out of my life and to break in, into everybody's life around me. If that's you, would you just raise your hand right now? I'm ready for a breakthrough of the Holy Ghost. Way too many hands to count. And lastly, I can never preach and do this with every head bowed and every eye closed. This is the last one. Ma'am or sir, God wants to do business with you. If you're hearing the sound of my voice, whether you're at home or you're in this church and you're not right with God, can I tell you, Pastor Carl is not saved. I see a lot of people crying. The Holy Ghost has moved in on this service. With every head bowed and every eye closed, can I tell you, Pastor Carl is not saved because he's good. He's saved because God's good. And if you're here, you can't be good enough to be saved. You can't join a church to save. You can't give an offering to be saved. The only thing you can do is receive Jesus. You can reject him or receive him. And if you're hearing the sound of my voice and you're say, Barry, I'm not right with God. I'm not sure if I died if I'd go to heaven. With every head bowed and every eye closed, you say, Barry, I want to get right with God tonight. If that's you right now, would you just raise your hand right up to the Lord? You're not raising it to me. You're raising it to the Lord. I see that hand. I see that hand. I see that hand. Anybody else? Once you raise your hand, you can put it back down. Anybody else, Barry, I'm not right with God. You're hearing the sound of my voice with every head bowed and every eye closed. This is a holy moment. Barry, I'm not right with God. But I want to be right with God tonight. Anybody else here tonight? Ma'am or sir, if, if there's a voice telling you to raise your hand, it, it's not the voice of the devil. It's the voice of God. Anybody else? I'm going to wait one more moment, ma'am or sir. I'm not right with God, but Barry, I want to get right with God tonight. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Who else here today? Anybody else? I'm going to wait just one more moment. I'm not right with God. One more moment. As the family of God, could we pray this together? We're not going to pray a man prayer. We're just going to pray the Word of God. Would you just pray after me, Romans 10, 9, and 10? Lord Jesus. Let's try that one more time. Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth. I believe in my heart that you died on the cross. You rose from the grave. Forgive me for my sins. Come into my life. Save me. I make you my Lord and Savior. Would you look up here? For those of you that prayed that prayer, let me tell you why you're saved. Wait, 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 Brother Barry. You don't have the power to tell people they're saved. You're right, I don't. But God's Word has the power to say this. Romans 10, 13 says that everyone that calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. They shall be saved. For the adults and young people that prayed that prayer, if you called on the name of the Lord in faith, 
you're saved. Not because I say you're saved, because God's word says you're saved. For those of you that prayed that prayer, my wife's at our table. We have a free gift for you tonight. We have our 30-second devotional. We want to give you that as a gift. You, you can high-five my wife. You can fist bump her. You can hug her. You can say, I got right with God, and we want to give you a copy of that free. The reason is I want you every day to meet with a loving father. Well, well, Barry, do I stop at 30 seconds? No, but you start at 30 seconds. The reason we brought 30-second devotional, the majority of Christians don't spend time with God every day. How many know before you run, you got to what? And before you walk, you got to what? You got to crawl. Number two, in just a moment, we're going to lead some anointed worship. And if you were serious, many people raised their hands for healing. I'm going to ask you to come forward. I'm going to ask you to just begin to worship God, and I'm going to pray with you. I'm going to lay my hand on, God, on you. I'm going to believe God to heal you tonight like he healed my dad. If you're here tonight and you raise your hand, say, baby, i got to forgive somebody. When this worship starts, I want you to come forward. I want you to step out in faith like these young people. I want you to begin to worship God, and I want to believe God for, for you to come out of that prison. And if you're here today and you say, Barry, I want supernatural, miracle-working power from God. Friends, I'm going to ask you to come forward. You know, there's something powerful about taking a step forward. Can I get a yes? There's something powerful about when we take a step forward. I'm going to ask you to take a step forward. And, and do you know why I like it, why I raise my hands? It's a universal sign of surrender. Would you stand with me right now? Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, as we're about to worship you, as we're about to sing your greatness... Father, I pray in the name of Jesus right now for an overflow of healing. Father, I pray for every person that comes forward that needs healing in their body, that in Jesus' name you would heal them, Father. Lord, for those that need wisdom. Lord, for those that need debt cancellation. Father, for those that want more of your power. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. In Jesus' name. If you want a breakthrough, people are already coming forward right now. Would you just come forward right now? You want a breakthrough? Would you just begin to worship God? Don't worry about who's around you. Don't worry about who's behind you. Could we just sing this right now? Could we just declare to God, God, we declare that the obstacle in front of us is not bigger than the God inside of us. In Jesus' name. We thank you for your faithfulness tonight to meet with us in this place. Lord, we thank you for the miracles that have been accomplished, for the healings, for the provision, for the strongholds and the, and the, and the addictions and the, and the attacks of the enemy that have been defeated because of who you are and what you're doing here in this place. Lord, we thank you for those that have come to know you as Lord and Savior tonight. Pray, God, that you will assure them in their heart and in their mind, God, of the of the commitment and the and the decision the choice they've made tonight that they will know that they know that they are saved that they are forgiven that they are yours god they are chosen by you hallelujah lord we thank you for your faithfulness tonight worthy are you lord worthy are you lord. hallelujah 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 i want to do uh I, I, two two things i want to do real quick uh if, if you've been around life church you know our you know our bell story we watched, a, we watched a movie called Ring the Bell. It was a boys' camp, and every time a boy got saved, they went and rang the bell that was hanging out in the front yard, and, and everybody came running and celebrated. And the angels in heaven are celebrating because some of you tonight surrendered your lives to the Lord. And so I want to give you that opportunity to come, and, and it, this has nothing to do, there's nowhere in the Bible it says to do this. This is just something that we started doing as a way to celebrate with you your new faith in Christ. And so I'll give you just a second. If it's you if, you, if you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior tonight and surrendered your life to him, I want you to come and grab a hold of that bell, ring it good and loud, and we want to celebrate your new faith with you. Anybody? Anybody ready to do that? I know it's a bold step. Everybody will be watching, but that's okay. That's okay. All right. Okay, I'll, I'll let you slide tonight. Here's the last thing I want to ask you to do. If God did something special in your life tonight, I want you to either grab an offering envelope or a welcome card in the, in the chair that's in front, and there in front of you. Write on there what God did. 
and then there's a wooden box sitting on the corner of the information booth. Will you drop that in there? We just want to celebrate with you what God did, and we want to continue to pray with you till to, to we see that fulfilled, till we see that manifested in your life. And so I uh, just encourage you to do that. If you want to do it tonight and drop it in, you can, or do it uh, tomorrow night or Sunday morning or whatever, but the box will be there, and it's uh, just a wooden box right there. Drop it in there. If you want to put your name on there, we'll pray with you, pray with you by name. But otherwise, we'll just remember, hey, that person that God did this for, Lord, continue to minister to them and touch their hearts and lives. And then here's the last thing I need you to do. I need you to help us get word out about what's going on tomorrow night and Sunday. And bring your friends, your neighbors, your family, your co-workers, whether they know the Lord or not, but bring them. And let them come and let the Lord minister to them just as he has with us tonight. Amen? Amen. All right, you can uh, visit, talk amongst yourselves, uh, enjoy some fellowship, and uh, we will see you again tomorrow night at 6 o'clock, 6 o'clock tomorrow night. God bless you. Hey, those of you online, you already off? Okay, those of you online, join us again tomorrow night at 6 o'clock, Sunday morning, 6, uh, 1030, and Sunday night, 6 o'clock. God bless you. We love you all.